Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Nimbasa City. Today we'll be looking at a 2019, well late 2018 match from Sun Moon to Celestial Storm from a cup in Lyon, France between two players playing Buzz Garb, Buzzwool Garbador on the left and Zoroark, Zoroark Lycanroc on the right. So, player B playing Zoroark Lycanroc starts the game playing with uh, throws down a Brooklet Hill, searching out a Rockruff with 70 HP, and then plays a Cynthia, starting with Zerura. Attaches a DCE to Rockruff, and passes the turn. So, generally, this is a favorable matchup for Buzzwell Garbodor, thanks to the weakness and the fact that it doesn't play any GX Pokemon. And also yeah, and also thanks to Shrine of Punishment, which deals after multi after a multitude of turns decent to heavy damage to every single GX Pokemon on the opponent's field. So player A starts a Ranguru, not a great start, but generally the deck plays one or two switch and four Guzma. Benches a Buzzwool, a Trubbish, Shrine of Punishment, well benches a Buzzwool, Shrine of Punishment, attaches an energy, plays Cynthia and then benches the Trubbish. Then plays the Nest Ball. Looks like going for a Slugma, which is a solid choice considering that between a Ranguru and Macargo, those make up the whole engine. And then plays down an Acrobike, discarding a Kukui. Um, Kukui is a pretty good card uh, in this matchup. But I wouldn't say it's necessary. I think it's um. I think it's important to hit some some certain numbers, but only at the time and generally with weakness and between Diancy, Choice Band, Beast Energy, and the various attacks that you have at your disposal, it's not completely necessary to be reliant on cards like Kukui. Well, on Kukui specifically. Uh, and then plays down an Ultra Ball, searching out a Diancy. Now, I don't know if player A has another Ultra Ball in hand, but if they don't, I would have waited another turn to play down that Ultra Ball and get out a Macargo and get that engine up and running. But um, back to player B. Um, they play Palpad and then a Lele, searching out a Cynthia. This tells me that they only play one Cynthia in the deck, which um, from a construction standpoint, I'd say it's, well, I don't want to say it's a mistake, but I would, I would say that playing more search engine, uh, draw engines, draw supporters, cards like Cynthia and Lily um, is is a stronger option uh, really just to get that strong turn one I'm saying strong a lot but uh, to get that solid turn one start and consistent draw throughout the game even though you have Zorark you still want to have that draw throughout the game um, and looks like player B whiffs the energy to attack and even just being able to deal 80 damage on the Oranguru, it's, I mean, we can, we saw earlier that player A has a Sudowoodo in the deck, which limits the opponent's bench, so being able to just get that early damage down and then being able to Guzma it up later, that might be useful, although of course with Lycanroc and the weakness, that's maybe not necessary. But back to player A's turn, they get down a Macargo, uses Smooth Over for what looks like a Fighting Energy, and then Guzma's up the Slugma, Instruct, now they're already doing 50 damage, so um, actually nothing they can play, maybe a Beast Energy actually, would be able to take out the Slugma. But it looks like they opt to not search that out 
and simply attach a second fighting energy and do 50 damage to the Slugma. And player B has the Macargo in hand, as we saw earlier from the Timer Ball, and uses Smooth Over, searching out any one card and putting it on top of the deck, ready for Zoroark's trade to just draw straight into it. And he uses Lycanroc's Bloodthirsty Eyes, evolves, uses a Gust effect, pulls up that Trubbish, benches a Diancy to do 10, 20 extra damage. This is great because with the rotation of strong energy, we weren't able to hit that 130, which is such a magic number. But with Diancy in the format, that is still an option. And uses Guzma to bring up that Buzzwell, which had two energy on it, quite a threat, and simply takes it out. Now this Lycanroc is in the active, dealing a whole bunch of damage, and there are hardly any cards in player B's discard pile, meaning that Trash Alliance from Garbodor doesn't do much damage. So we'll see what player A has to do. It looks like starting off with a smooth over, and instruct for one, draw straight into that Cynthia, and plays it. Now, what they're looking for is a way to get a buzzwall, an energy, and a switch. And then just get some damage in play. The Shrine of Punishment is already helping a little bit. But if they can attack, uh, you know, maybe throw it on 50 damage, plus the, I think that's 20 on the active Lycan Rock. And then... Oh, and it looks like it's just a pass. Now player B can get down a Guzma and a switch for an energy. They can just take out the Buzzwool and completely eliminate that threat. Or just KO the active. Um, that's, you know, also a threat as well. Uh, with the rotation of Bridget, everybody plays, well, most decks played four Nest Ball and four Ultra Ball at the time. Meaning that Um, yeah, meaning that more items are played than earlier. Or, well, it's hard to say if more or less items were played, since certain items were played to make up for supporters and certain other items were rotated out, meaning that they weren't able to, meaning that, well, they're not able to be played. But anyway, back to the game. Player B knocked out player A's Trubbish, and now player A promotes the... Buzzwool and player player A, I guess, is on Sledgehammer turn, which means sled, their Sledgehammer is doing 120 damage. Base damage plus Diana C, 140, and all that's necessary, it looks like, is a choice band to take the KO to do 170 plus the 30 that's already on there uh, for 200 damage total. And yes, looks like that's what they're searching out using Smooth Over putting that on top of the deck and playing down an acrobike, discarding a shrine of punishment and attaching the choice band to the active and Lily just drawing some extra cards looks like they already have three cards in hand so three more and draws into two more choice bands so this is why you always play out your draw supporters first before using smooth over or anything that way you really know what options you have and you can smooth over and if you draw to what you need you can smooth over for something else afterwards but um doesn't really matter here they take the ko anyway and have another buzzwell on the bench ready to attack no trubbish but that's less important um so player b uses a smooth over ready for a trade and if they have Kukui or a Switch, or Guzma actually, that works too. Then they can take the knockout, dealing 120, 140 damage with Sledgehammer. And completely eliminated the Diancy from play, meaning that less damage is being dealt. 
and they're not on Sledgehammer Returns anymore. Um, so player A's Sledgehammer is only doing 30 base damage, and player B's Sledgehammer is still doing 120 damage. Uh, 140 with the Diancy, but we'll see if that continues to remain based on their turn. Escape Rope is playing down, and player B says, hey, you know what, I don't think you can KO this Diancy. It's not a GX, which means Choice Band doesn't do anything. You don't have Diancy in play, and your Sledgehammer is only doing 30 damage. So we'll see if you have a Guzma in hand or something. But I don't think you do. And here comes down a smooth over. You know, player A only ha already has like four cards in hand, I think. Uh, or more, maybe. Which means instruct isn't an option. So if they want to draw into whatever is smoothed over, it needs to be with a supporter, as we can see Kakui. And looks like what was smoothed over was a Trubbish. And they use Sledgehammer for 50. Thanks to the Kukui. And Shrine damage takes up more damage. Looks like 80 damage on that Zoroark and 80 on that Tapu Lele as well. Almost halfway through to being KO'd that Tapu Lele. And yeah, Smooth Over being played right now. Looks like eyeing up a Fighting Energy for some reason. Not entirely sure what that would be used for. Uh, if they have maybe an Acer Roll in hand, they can pick up the active Diancy and then bench a Rock Ruff and attach to it. And it looks like there's a Rock Ruff in hand, so discarding a Choice Band, useless in this matchup. And here comes an Acer Roll, as predicted. Throwing out the buzzle, really getting out the maximum value out of it, benching down a rock ruff with a fighting energy attached, and sledgehammer for the KO. Now it's really a shame that player B doesn't have a a stadium to really replace the shrine of punishment because because this damage is really racking up. I mean. These GXs are already taking a whole load of damage. Zoroark is almost halfway to being KO'd. Tapu Lele is halfway to being KO'd. And that is simply just from the damage from Shrine of Punishment. Just from turns being passed. And here comes a Guzma. Throwing up the Buzzwool. Ready to KO this Zoroark. Is doing 60 base damage, 120 plus 90, that's 210. Direct knockout. Well, after nine turns of Shrine of Punishment. And here comes a Rock Ruff. Draws for turn. And what player B needs is a Lycan Rock and a DCE. Uh, the Diancy is already in hand, ready to save the knockout. And here comes a Brooklet Hill. Throws down a an Ultra Ball, discarding a Timer Ball and a Zoroark. Timer Ball, not guaranteed to get cards and no real reason to sort of waste hand advantage in order to potentially get a card that you can already get with Ultra Ball. Here comes a Tapu Lele for a Lily. And use a Smooth Over so that Lily can draw the card that is being searched out which is probably a DC. Yep, there it is. And it takes the KO on the Trubbish. Now all player A needs is, an, is a Guzma, which means here comes that uh, Sudowoodo active and smooth over. Acrobike, Guzma, Tapu Lele, and oh, Beast Energy, looks like that was needed as well for the KO. Yep, 70 damage. Uh, without the Beast Energy, they were only doing 60 damage. Uh, and the Tapu Lele had 70 HP left. So with the Beast, that adds it up to 90. And what a great game one from both players. Uh, really close. 
it really came down to who has the setup and I really think if the like and rock ability was used to KO either the Buzzwool or the or actually the Macargo that would have been a better play in hindsight but of course you know what they say hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, we'll just see what they have to play in the second game looks like one milligan is coming down and yep everybody is ready to go starting a whoa starting with a whole host of basics two rock rough thanks to Brooklyn Hill Zerura Slugma and Diancy and then throws down a Cynthia I have a hard time believing that they only have one Cynthia in the deck, considering they started with it twice. But um, that's a story for another time. And they draw another Zerura. And they find the energy attaching directly to the Rock Ruff, really getting ahead on these attachments. When you play a deck that needs multiple attachments from the hand per turn, you really want to get them down early and that way you don't fall behind and it looks like player B is taking advantage of this Brooklet Hill plays down a Sudowoodo and player B is going to discard a Slugma now this is a weird choice for me because Macargo has one of the in my opinion best abilities in the game being able to choose your top deck at every turn is really powerful. Um, if you look back at 2006, I think it was, when it was in the format, it was really one of the most, it was really like a staple card, uh, unless you played Pidgeotto, uh, Pidgeot, actually. Um, I would have discarded the Zerua. Um, I mean, I guess that's a mistake since the opponent Guzma KO'd the other Zura. Um, either the Zura or the Rock Ruff. Because really having one Zoroark and one Macargo is way more powerful than having two Zoroark. But, um, yeah, here comes a stretcher, throws down, brings back the Zora that was KO'd. And they're tied at 5-5 five five on prizes thanks to the Lycanroc DCE combo. Um, and the Slugma is KO'd, which means player A needs to search out another Slugma and Macargo uh, while maintaining the momentum that they have from the first game, uh, from the first KO. Here comes the Brooklyn Hill searching out the Diancie. And throws out a Shrine of Punishment, ready to rack up some damage on both GXs in play. And potentially any more GXs that come into play in the future. And here comes a Fighting Energy, Choice Band to the active. And looks like it's going to be 60, uh, 80, plus 10, 90 from the Shrine of Punishment and 10 to the benched Zorark. Um, player B discards, uh, benches a second Zorark, discards one with trade, plays Kukui, um, probably just getting some extra draw, and takes the KO with Claw Slash. Uh, player A promotes another Buzzwall, attaches another Fighting Energy, and looks like getting ready to swing around. Um, doing 50 damage for the time being. But really just needs a... What do they need? Oh. Wait, what? Oh, they're on Sledgehammer turns. Uh, doesn't need anything more. Just takes the KO directly. Uh, because the opponent only has four prize cards left. 
um, attaches a DC to the active Zorak and looks like a Guzma on that Sudorudo, really freeing up the bench space and allowing for more KOs in the future. Being able to be able to have access to that extra bench space really frees up the possibilities of taking KOs on things like Buzzwool with a Devoured Field if they play that, or Kakui as we've seen Player B play. And, uh, and on anything that has 120 HP, such as this Diancy or Garbodor, which comes up, which hasn't come up yet, but which may come up in the future. Player A plays out an Ultra Ball, searching out a Macargo, really getting that engine up and running. And attaches a Fighting Energy to the active, ready to swing around. The swing around here actually takes the KO 80 times 2, 120, plus 40, that's already there, 200, plus 10 from the Shrine of Punishment between turns. Really rounding out the damage being taken. I think they only have three prizes left, so just a non-GX KO after this turn will be able to win the game. But we'll see what happens. Looks like a... Uh, looks like a smooth over is coming down, putting that beast energy on the top. Uh, not necessary now, but potentially necessary in the future and takes two prize cards. Now, player B plays down a Tapu Lele. I think Kakui is necessary, but I think it's already been played, so it just grabs an Acerola. Don't really know what you can do at this point. Maybe throw up Tapu Lele. Uses trade once. Um, Kakui, there it is. Tapu Lele, yep, just filling up that bench, doesn't really need to grab anything, but grabs an Ace Roller anyway. Two Ace Roller, two Kukui, that's an interesting count. Attaches the DCA to the active, and takes the KO. Now, player A only needs a Guzma, looks like, and an Ultra Ball, which they have, and an Energy. Beast Energy from earlier, Guzma on Rockruff. 60 damage for the KO, um, 80 with the Diancy, but that was not so necessary since the Rockruff only has 60 HP. And that's it. Play, um, Buzzwool Garbodor takes the game 2-0 on Zoroark with the advantage as it has in the metagame. Thanks for watching, everybody, and see you next time.